This is a quick tutorial to show you how to add meshes to your 3D printed parts. And we'll take this as an example. Uh, it could be anything, any shape. As long as it have a flat side that prints on the bed, we can do we can add meshes. So the first thing we do is to on the bottom add a new sketch. And we want to have this inner profile projected. Uh, so with that, we also want an offset of the inner profile. And uh, for this one, I think one millimeter usually works pretty good for uh, an overlap. Uh, but you can make it smaller as thin as your uh, line width, first layer line width. So let's keep one millimeter here. All right. So now we need to seal this opening up because we're creating a modifier and right now since there's no geometry here the modifier won't work it won't have anything to modify with so we need to seal this up first so let's uh, do extrusion and just select the opening here you should be able to just pick the area uh, even without the projection and let's uh, do um, two layers so this is going to define your uh, layer count for the meshes. Uh, with my experiment, two layers works pretty good. Make sure you uh, change the direction. So it's going up, and we want to join. OK. Now this is one piece, and uh, all the mesh areas are sealed. Now we want to turn back on the sketch. So we can see it and we want to do another extrusion but this time including the overlapping area and we want to go to the same direction with the same layer count so it's only modifying this area other than uh, the rest of the geometry and make sure you are doing a new component you can do the new body in this example but if you have multiple openings that you are doing together uh, make sure you do a new component so all the bodies will be saved there and you can export as one STL okay now uh, we have two bodies uh, we have a new component right that's the mesh modifier and we have the body here and the let me turn off the yeah and the modifier is a slightly bigger here. OK. Now we can export the two. Uh, with this mesh modifier, we export as STL. Okay. Save as mesh, STL. And we want to save the the part. This won't be the original part since we sealed up the openings. Okay. Okay. Now we can go to our uh, slicer. And right now I'm using Super Slicer. It should be the same for Prusa Slicer. Uh, we just add those two parts. So here's the trick. Uh, if you add both of them together like this, uh, they will be treated as two parts. Wait, what? Yes, they will be treated as two parts. See, they are, they are not connect it anyhow so it's going to be really tricky to align them properly uh, so if so let's delete them and add again this time just add the main parts and we don't care the position and now what you want to do is right click and add part 
min load. So lin load the modifier example. So right now it's one part. They are kind of grouped together and their coordinates are aligned perfectly. So even if you move them around, they are still together. And now we can make this a modifier. You can right click, no, um, you can right click here if you can select it, but let's do the gear here and change type, make it a modifier, okay. And what it does now is it changes the overlapping area to the new setting. Right now without changing anything we can see the slicing is just normal. It's just a normal slice piece, nothing, nothing special. But what we can do is, since we already made this a modifier, we can add parameters and we can change the top and bottom layer to zero and slice again. That means the modifier covered area will have no top and bottom layers. And you can see there's a mesh going on already. Right? And then you can add you can keep adding more uh, parameters to change, right? There are two shortcuts, link fill and parameter shells, but you can also add like any settings you prefer here. Uh, so the infill shortcut covers it pretty much. Uh, you can change the density, you can change the type, the pattern type. Um, and uh, one thing if you really want for uh, cosmetics, you can add the pattern fill pattern angle. So like in an earlier example, if it was grid you can you can change that uh, angle to whatever you like and you can change the density right to to have a bigger mesh or smaller it's all up to you um, I think 40% looks pretty good for me um, here's another example with the honeycomb pattern and 40% I think this looks really good. Alright, cool. That's uh, about this tutorial. If you like this information, please consider subscribe to the channel. And uh, I'll put more 3D, re 3D printing related stuff here uh, shortly. And uh, yeah, hope to see you soon. See ya.